There's power in the name of Jesus. Before we receive communion today, I want you to sit for just a moment. Would you just take a seat for just a moment? And the Lord spoke to me to teach today and to do a little bit of a teaching on communion. Our, our uh, musicians, I want or to continue to play. But there's a lot of people that are out sick today. This holiday season, uh, Christmas season, we've been hit with some uh, unusual weather and things have happened. And there's a lot of you that are home watching today. And as we prepare our hearts for communion, I, if you're watching on Facebook or the internet, I want you to go into the kitchen and I want you to get some bread or a cracker or a cookie or something and some juice or water, whatever you have. The elements aren't as important as the obedience is. One of my pastors called me not long ago and they said there's a person dying in the hospital. They've given their life to the Lord. They want to be baptized. What should I do? And I said, well, sprinkle them. And my pastor said, well, that's what I thought, but we don't sprinkle. And I said, you know what? The method is not as important as the obedience. And that guy couldn't get in a pool. He couldn't get in an area where he was submerged. So, so we sprinkled him. See, God honors our faith. God honors our faith. It's not how we do it. It's the obedience of our hearts. People have said to me, well, you know, I didn't know you could take communion anywhere but church. Listen, you need to take, some of you need to start taking communion every day. Let me tell you about communion and why it is so important and why we celebrate it, especially this Christmas season. You see, everything in the Old Testament was a type and shadow that brought us to where we are today. The Old Testament wasn't even as Gentiles, as Christians. The, 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 Old, the Old Testament wasn't even our covenant. It was a type and shadow of the covenant that was to come, which is the New Covenant or the New Testament. Israel being in bondage was a type and shadow of you and I today being in prison or slavery of sin. Moses prophesied that the children of Israel were to come out of Egypt. That is a type and shadow of you and I today coming out of the bondage of our sin, walking into the newness of life in our promised land. And folks, our promised land isn't just heaven. Our promised land is heaven on earth. And Jesus backed that up. And what happened the night that they left Egypt's bondage and they went to the promised land. You probably know the story. The, the, the Hebrew Bible and the Jews even today call it the Passover. Passover is a type and shadow of what we call today Holy Communion. And what did God have them do in that old covenant? He showed them a picture of things to come. And he told them the night that they left, he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to boil a lamb. Now used to in their, in their sacrifices, they would, they, would, uh, they would sacrifice a portion of it. It would become meat. That, that would eat for the priests and things. But that night, God says, I don't want you to, to, to just offer me a portion of the lamb. I want you to boil the whole thing. That was a type and shadow showing us today that Christ didn't come just for one thing. He gave his all. He not only died for our sin, but He died for our sickness. He died for our health. He died for our healing. He died for our prosperity. He died for everything. And God was showing Israel that you are to boil and to sacrifice that whole lamb because He knew that Jesus was coming not to just give a part of Him, but to give His all. The Bible says that they, they, they did that and they sprinkled the blood on their doorpost. And the Bible says that when he saw the blood, the death angel, he saw the blood, he passed over them. That is a type and shadow today that Christ, his blood, that when we apply that to our hearts and to our lives, that not only does death pass over us, but everything else that's negative that the enemy comes in, he sees that blood and the enemy says, I can't mess with that because that blood is more powerful than I. 
the Bible says, and we're going to take a portion of this and we're going to edit it and we're going to show it on our website and our Facebook because many of you need to come back to this teaching, this short teaching that I'm doing today because you are suffering sickness in your body. Some of you, the doctors don't even know what it is. Some of you is cancer. Some of it's Parkinson's, HIV, whatever it is, Jesus paid the price for your healing. And communion is a time that we come together and we remember that and we, it, it, and we, it reminds us of our covenant with God, that healing is in that covenant. Aren't you glad for that? In Psalm 105, you might want to write this down and read it when you get home, but in Psalm 105, I had it marked. There it is. Psalm 105, verse 37. It talks about what Israel did in this type of communion, this type and shadow of communion, how powerful it was even in the Old Testament. And if it was this powerful in the Old Agreement, just think of how powerful this covenant of taking bread and wine, how much more powerful it is in our new covenant. The Bible says in, in Psalm 105, verse 37 says he speaking of God brought out Israel laden with silver and gold after they took a type of communion the bread and the body they had unleavened bread at that piece of feast of Passover which represented the body of Christ the lamb died shed his blood and they had wine that night that represented that blood the Bible says that after they did that, this is what happened. He brought out Israel laden with silver and gold. And from among their tribes, there was no one feeble. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you heard me. But after that, there was no one feeble. Why? Because God took their sickness away. They, you know why he took their sickness away? You know why he gave them the finances? Because he knew that they were going to need wholeness and healing and money on their journey. And how much more today do we need not to have one feeble, but to be in our best strength so that we can go on our journey and fulfill the gospel of Jesus Christ. So today, as you participate in Holy Communion, we're going to eat the unleavened bread. We're going to drink the fruit of the vine. And I want you to remember as you partake today, we're going to come forward in just a few moments. But I want you, as you are eating that bread, you're partaking of that lamb. That lamb, Jesus, he died. His whole body was sacrificed. If you have trouble with your eyes, I want you to remember that, that those eyes were sacrificed for your eyes. If it's your back, his back was sacrificed and broken so that your back could be healed. As you eat that bread and drink this cup today, I want you to know that there was no cancer in Jesus. And let that blood and that bread drive out cancer, sickness disease, whatever it is, because we have a covenant today. It is a promise. God said, as long as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show, you practice, you participate in what I've done until I come. That's good news today, isn't it? So I want you to stand. Our ushers have got the table together. We're going to start. We're going to dismiss from the back. We've got some ushers back there. And I want you to come forward. And I want you to take bread. And I want you to take the cup. And I want you to hold on to it until everybody is served. And at home, go to your kitchen. Get some elements. Maybe your, your workplace. Whatever. And let's participate in Holy Communion together. Would you come? Let's worship. Lord spoke to me and I'm going to tell you what he told me he said get ready because things are about to change he said 2020 is going to be the year 
of manifest healings like the earth has never seen before. 2020 is going to be a year where the lame will walk and the blind will see and the deaf will hear. He said to me as a pastor, and he's telling, and I'm telling you as a church, to get ready for healings and miracles like you've never seen before because God is pouring it out. And he's beginning today through Holy Communion. And that's why if you're homesick today, you need to participate today. And if you're here, I want you to know that when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are literally eating your cure for whatever it is that is wrong with you I said you are eating your cure for whatever it is that is wrong with you and as you eat this bread and drink this cup you're gonna go out from here laden with silver and gold you're gonna come out from here healed in your body you're gonna come out and there's not gonna be one feeble amongst you because God is showing his power on the earth today so Grace Assembly, get ready, get ready, get ready for prayer teams, more prayer teams. Get ready, get ready, get ready for more uh, healing rooms and times of prayer and times of healing because God says, I'm going to bring people from all over the world that are going to come to Bakersfield to experience my healing power and to experience my prophetic power and prophetic words of encouragement. And from here, I'm going to manifest my healing throughout the world, says the Lord. Do you believe that? Father, we thank you for these elements that we hold in our hands, this bread that represents your body, this cup that represents your blood. We pray, God, that you would bless this bread and this cup. And Father, as we partake today, we're eating of our cure from everything from the common cold to cancer, HIV and AIDS, Parkinson's disease, kidney disease, cancer, whatever it is. I want you to hold up your bread. The Bible says, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread. Let's break it. He said, take, eat. This is my body that's broken for you. You're eating your cure today. Begin to thank God for it. His body was broken so that your, your body could be healed today. God, I thank you. I thank you for healing high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Lord, I thank you today for it in Jesus' name. Father, let your healing power go through these airwaves, through cyberspace, through these, oh God, and heal your people. Hold up your cup. The Bible says, in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show what I have accomplished until I come again. Let's partake of the cup. Pass your cup to the center aisle. Our ushers will pa uh, pick that up. But this is what the Lord instructed me to do today. He said, I'm not going to move in prayer teams he said as the shepherd of this flock me the under shepherd of Jesus that's what I am the shepherd the under shepherd I am to pray a healing prayer over you and to pronounce healing and wholeness from everything that the enemy has put on you listen God didn't give you disease he didn't give you sickness that is from the devil God doesn't get glory out of sickness and disease. He's not punishing you. He's not doing anything but loving you today. That is from the enemy. And Father, as the under-shepherd of Jesus, as your shepherd, as your priest, I pronounce blessing over the people today in the name of the Lord. I pray healing and wholeness over those that are here today, over those that are watching. That blood paid the price. That body was broken. And I command healing to come on your people right now. Father, I command that they will go out in prosperity, that they will go out in healing and health, and that you would give them strength for their journey as you gave Israel strength for their journey, and so that the world will know that there is a God in heaven. 
Father, I declare and I pronounce and proclaim. Come on, lift your hands right now if you want this blessing. I pronounce blessing over your people. I, I, I pronounce blessing and I renounce sickness. I renounce disease over them in the name of Jesus. And as your shepherd, the under shepherd of Jesus Christ, I declare healing over marriages today. I declare healing over bodies today. I declare financial prosperity now in Jesus' name. And I declare that 2020...